Hey guys, welcome back to Insight Tennis Tour Stroke Series. And my name is Rick Oldroyd. I'm the president and founder of Insight Tennis, I'm also the head pro. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about the forehand. I've done a uh, series of videos uh, just recently on the forehand. We've gotten some tremendous response from all over the world, some great questions. So uh, I've even done some clarification videos and we've also put together a full course uh, on the forehand. It's called the Forehand Mastery Training Course and this is designed to give you all of the biomechanics, all of the intricate details uh, of the best players in the world on the forehand. I'm going to go ahead and include that in the bottom of uh, the video here. I'll put the link in the bottom of the video so go ahead and, and go out and uh, check that out. But uh, today's video we want to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of little things that happen that uh, the pros use and these are just little nuances that allow them to create so much power and spin uh, with, and, and it's effortless power. You guys have heard that term before. How do they create such effortless power on all of their ground strokes but specifically the forehand. So uh, if you've watched any of my other videos you know that I advocate soft soft hands on the racket. If you guys want more power on your forehand immediately hold the racket softer and maintain that soft hand all the way through contact, you'll squeeze enough at impact to maintain racket control. Don't hear me wrong, you do have to control the racket through contact, but most people hold the racket far too tight and it is killing your power. That effortless power that you hear about and that you see on the Pro Tour comes from nice soft hands loose arm, loose grip, so that naturally the racket can release as a product of the momentum of the swing at the proper time. And as far as top spin goes, obviously that's created also by more racket head speed and starting from slightly below the ball, contact and finishing above the ball imparts plenty of spin. But today what we want to talk about is how the pros hit through the ball and then there's a little thing that happens after contact that I think there's a lot of confusion around. Um, so let's talk about this. So first of all, I'm a big advocate, and you've heard this in my other videos, that if you want to hit the heavy ball, you got to hit through the line of the ball. And this is just simple physics, guys. Um, it's a big myth that you have to use excessive wrist rotation and snapping and all kinds of things to create topspin. Absolutely not the case. Um, now, I'm not saying if you're up there by the net, two, three feet from the net, and you've got to get it up over the net, you use more wrist, of course, don't hear me wrong. But in general, the rally ball from the baseline that you see the pros that they hit so heavy and so deep is uh, produced because when they come into the ball, they're going to come into the ball, and when they come in and make contact with the ball here, they go out to their target. Out to their target. Yes, it's slightly rotating. Yes, it's from lower to, to higher, but they go out to their target. And remember from a subsequent video, when I get to that position right there, the ball's gone. The ball's gone. You'll see Federer and Nadal, all of them in this position after the ball's gone. But from this position here, too often it's been taught that we want to rotate our wrist over and roll it over like this. Okay, so let me do that again. And this doesn't do anything to the ball, the ball's gone. I'm just going to rotate my wrist over, right, turn the, turn the knob or whatever terminology you've heard. If you watch the best players in the world, this absolutely does not happen. The whole arm, the wrist, the arm and everything move as a unit and stay in the same position once they have made contact and after contact. So let me show you what I mean. So when they come into the ball like this, they're coming in and they're going to release the racket back and it's going to come up to contact. And as I make contact here, the racket naturally will release from a product of the momentum of the swing. Centrifugal force catches up and if my hand and wrist and arm are loose, you can't stop this from happening. Okay, you don't want to try to make this happen, you want to allow it to happen. But now that that's happened, now that I'm here and I've allowed that racket to release naturally through the ball, you'll see Federer and, and Nadal and these guys after contact, they look like this, right? From this position here, what you're going to see is the arm and the wrist and, the, and everything stays the same. They go right here and the whole entire thing 
moves as a unit and comes around. Okay? It's very, very, very subtle, but a lot of players are getting into trouble because they're starting this wrist rotation back here so that they can finish over here, and that's a problem. Okay? We've got to hit the ball first, and once the ball is gone, the whole arm, the wrist and the arm, rotate as a unit. Okay? Go watch Federer, go watch Nadal, you're going to see it as plain as day. So, once again in review, taking the racket back, I'm coming here, I want to hold this position as long as possible, centrifugal force catches up at contact and the racket will naturally release through the ball if you allow it to happen. Once it's released through the ball, this position, the ball's gone. What I want to do from here is allow my whole arm, wrist, everything to move as a unit and finish the stroke. Okay? This keeps everything connected. The reason why this is important is because if I start thinking about this kind of stuff with my wrist, I've disconnected my, my uh, self from my uh, power source, which is my body. Okay? So this keeps me connected. As I come into the ball, I'm coming in, the body is driving, opening, right? Centrifugal force catches up right here and it keeps me connected. If I start doing this kind of stuff, now I've disconnected from my body, right? But if I allow that racket and arm and body and everything to travel as a unit, I'm staying connected all the way through the shot and that's a huge power source, guys. So go out and try this, okay? Keep that racket and, and a couple of frames of reference that you wanna think about. If you watch Federer and Nadal and those guys, you can see that they're releasing their racket head because as they get to this position here, if they didn't release their racket head, the racket would never get back to contact. So centrifugal force comes back and they make contact and then the racket head releases through contact. Releases through contact and that's why you see this position with their wrist after contact. Not that position. Right after contact, yeah, it's this position, but it continues to that position, which says they released the racket head through the ball. But from here, all I want to do is allow my racket, my arm, my body, and everything to work as a unit and come around, not just my wrist independent of my body. This will keep you connected. This will help you with your power. Remember, the power is in the body in this game, guys. The, this is the engine, make no mistake about it. The wrist and arm is involved, but not as much as people think. And this is the power source right here. So guys, go out and try this. It'll help you stay connected uh, to the ball and connected to, the, uh, to your body, which is your power source. And it's really gonna allow you to hit that heavy ball, the ball that jumps off the court and gives your opponents all kinds of trouble. If you guys like this video, uh, click the link below and subscribe to the channel. Check out our website at Insight Tennis. Also, uh, I mentioned in the beginning that we have put together a course on the forehand. I'm going to put the link in the, the bottom of the video here. Check it out. Go take a look at it. Uh, it's designed to give you all of the biomechanics uh, of the best players in the world. All the little nuances, um, power secrets of the pros, uh, I call them. Uh, that I talk about and little things that if someone doesn't point it out you probably won't see it but boy it makes a huge difference um, if you're wondering why the pros hit the ball the way they do it's these little things that they do that either people don't know about but they are small little things but they have a huge huge impact so check it out again I'm gonna put uh, the link at the bottom uh, just click on the link that says Insight Tennis Store and you'll get all the the uh, information. Now this is the first of several courses that are going to be coming out so watch for that coming out. Make sure you hit the notification button uh, so that you know exactly uh, what's coming out and you get uh, all the new content as it comes out. So guys hopefully this is going to be helpful for you. Um, as always thanks so much for your time. We'll see you next time out on the court.